You guys are summer people? I don't, I like to know that I just won't get along. <laughs> summer people, I don't know, man. I feel like, first of all, summer people always have abs. I feel like that's a big part of it. And I just generally don't get along with people with abs. I don't know. <laughs> like, I realize that mental illness is a very complicated thing and it can affect anyone and it hits people in different ways and no one is exempt. But when someone with abs is like, I'm depressed, I'm like, mm, not enough. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Get yourself up and down for the crunches, I can't get out of bed. So we're different. <laughs> we're different, you and I, you know? And I don't like their arguments either, because when you start to complain about to summer, you're like, oh, this is what you want, 85 degrees? Feeling like a tick that the earth is trying to remove through heat? They're like, what about those summer nights, though? When it's 75, a little breeze, it's a little cool, a little dark. I'm like, that's fall. You're describing fall. <laughs> you should try fall. I think that's me. I'm a big fall guy. I like that. Like the leaves changing and, you know, just watching a limited Netflix series about a serial killer. That's my vibe. <laughs> that's, yeah, we got some true crime heads in here. I like it, yeah. I mean, I don't like it. I like the shows about it, I should be clear. But um, I watch a lot of them, and I have some opinions on serial killers. I got a bone to pick with these guys. Uh, first of all, don't do that. And then secondly, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of stuff about them. One of the things that's always funny to me is like serial killers in other countries, they don't put out their names, they don't put out their pictures, they don't give them the fame, you know, these Netflix series that we do. I think that's probably good, we shouldn't do that. I think if we want just like a middle ground to start with, I feel like we should definitely stop giving them such kick-ass nicknames, okay? Because these names, it's like, Bind, Torture, Kill, Boston, Strangler, and I'm like, those just sound like good metal albums to me. I don't know. <laughs> sound like they got some good solos on. There's one guy, Richard Chase, his nickname was the Vampire of Sacramento. That's the coolest shit I've ever heard in my life. If I killed somebody by accident and they started calling me the Vampire of Brooklyn, I would keep killing people just for that nickname. I'd be like, this is so much better than Hipster Frankenstein. I gotta hold on to this. I think if you gotta give them a name, we should give them weird, embarrassing names. Just random shit that has nothing to do with the crimes, you know? I wanna turn on the news and have them be like, Queen spends its seventh night in fear of the salad fucker. <laughs> so have some weirdo be like, whoa, is that me? I don't <laughs> fuck salads, I just strangle people, you know? He's talking to his mannequin, who is his best friend. Um, <laughs> You know, and lean into that. Then he has to send a, a letter to the police station, cut up magazines. It's like, hello, this is the salad fucker, I guess. <laughs> Didn't really choose that. Anyways, I have killed, I will. You know what, this is weird. I'm gonna stop, actually. I just don't want, this is getting weird for me and you. I just did the one and we're done. You know, like I think that would be probably better for everybody. Uh, another fear, a thing about serial killers, it's, it's weird to me, is uh, this is a thing that if you watch these shows, you might have heard of them. The true crime people, you ever hear the McDonald triad? Yes, a nod. That's a hard way to respond because no one can see it, but <laughs> she nodded. Uh, so the McDonald triad, okay. The McDonald triad is a psychiatric test. It's three things, and if your kid does these three things, it means he's gonna be a big time problem in the murder department, okay? <laughs> He's gonna go buck wild on some people. That's just gonna happen. And I say he because it's he. It's <laughs> he. We gotta figure that out, you know? I think there should be more female serial killers. <laughs> it's just Lizzie Borden cracking the glass ceiling with an ax, that's it. Good for her, you know? But the McDonald triad, the three things they look for, all right, the first one is bedwetting, all right, wetting the bed, cool. The second one is uh, playing with fire, all right, setting fires, cool. Uh, the third one is torturing and killing small animals. And I feel like we can just go with the third one. <laughs> I feel like that's pretty definitive to me. <laughs> I can't imagine this guy whose kid like took apart a squirrel on the front lawn and then he's like, well, his sheets are bone dry. <laughs> <laughs> Not my Damien, no. No, no, no. <laughs> He loves being on the swings by himself and other hobbies. It's good. <laughs> um, 
But serial killer shows aren't my only hobby. One thing I've gotten really into over the last couple of years is uh, this hobby. Uh, it's called, you guys ever heard of this, uh, balding? Anyone else? <laughs> Checking this out, huh? Pretty cool. You know, it was nice. I really got into it over the pandemic because I'd always had an interest in balding. <laughs> but I'd simply never had the time, you know? And so when the pandemic hit, I really had an hour or two to just sit around and just bald, you know? Just get it off there, because you got to follow your dreams. And one of mine was to have more places to get sunburned, if possible. <laughs> trying to do that. Um, so I did all that. Uh, it's good, you know. Um, the thing that's funny about me is that the way I'm balding, and I am Jewish, even though it looks like I hunt them. Right? <laughs> Those people off. Uh, so I am Jewish, and my bald spot is the exact size and shape of a yarmulke, all right? And so it sort of feels like there is a God, and they're like, oh, you're balding. If only you had some sort of tiny hat. <laughs> Maybe one that I'd already asked you to wear. But no, bacon is good. Enjoy it. Have fun. It's fine. It's fine. You know, yeah, that's the thing. If you're worried about the physical discrepancy, uh, it's because I was adopted. Um, I was born Irish. And then I was raised in a Jewish family, like they were trying to create some sort of depression super soldier. <laughs> where they were like, what if we took the saddest people on earth and raised them in a dojo of anxiety? We could beat Lexapro, I know it. Um, uh, I gotta get out of here, I'll leave you guys with this. Um, I used to really enjoy drinking. I don't drink anymore because I used to really enjoy drinking. <laughs> Stop. Um, and I have regrets from when I was drinking, but there's one thing I don't regret, and that was the time I got really drunk and decided a good use of my time would be to call every nightclub in the meatpacking district and leave them a voicemail. <laughs> this is the voicemail I left. It went like this. It went, hello, my name is Grant Nevins. I was at your nightclub earlier and my assistant, Gregory, seems to have dropped one of my priceless rubies on your floor. <laughs> so if you're cleaning up your nightclub and you happen to find a ruby, please give me a call back, Grant Nevins. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, that was pretty fun. And then I got the best voicemail I've ever received. This is from the 4040 Club, which is Jay-Z's club, which isn't super important, but I do feel adds to the atmosphere. Here's that. And that's why I love it so much. <laughs> is that it's just this woman, this dear woman, doing her due diligence on a man who claims to have lost a priceless ruby <laughs> at the club. And I don't know where to go from there. I think there's two paths. Either I have unbelievable timing and somebody lost a fucking ruby. <laughs> I just call them back and be like, you have my ruby? <laughs> they won't just give it to me. They'll be like, what color was it? And I'll be like, red. <laughs> <laughs> or I got to just keep calling them out and build up this character of this absent-minded eccentric billionaire who keeps getting blacked out and misplacing relics at the damn club. You know, and just see at what point will they stop calling me back. Just, hello, 4040 Club. Yes, Grant Nevins again. Oh, my ignorant, pig-headed assistant Gregory has done it again. In between the men's urinals. <laughs> the jeweled scimitar of Suleiman the Magnificent. Please look for it, you know, just keep hitting them back. <laughs> hello, 4040 Club. Yes, you guessed it, it's Grant Nevins again. <laughs> Oh, Gregory's really done it this time. <laughs> At the bottom of your hot tub, a spear, the tip of which is stained with the scarlet blood of the man you know as Jesus Christ. <laughs> I just gotta keep raising the stakes until eventually I'm just calling them like, hello, 4040 Club, yes, Grant Nevins. <laughs> well, Gregory has really done it this time. Yes, I know I should fire him, but his family has assisted mine for generations. <laughs> In the VIP area, an amulet. The amulet of Ra. 
Are you familiar? I must warn you, if it is not found, it could spell doom. Not only for me, not only for you, not only for the entire 4040 club, <laughs> but for the world, you must find it. Or no worries if not. You know. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, guys. Have a good night. Bye bye. <laughs>